Hi. So in this video I'm going to show how to create a turtle mesh um, without using a lot of polygons. So it's a very basic simple turtle mesh. This is good for video games um, but not good for really close um, detail. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a reptile texture I found on CG Textures and then I'm going to um, then take that and use that also as a bump map. So this is the third time, no fourth time I've tried recording this video. I really hope it works this time. So I'm going to start by opening up Blender. Alright, I'm just going to skip the start screen and maximize it and maximize it. So this is the Blender layout. I don't like the default cube at the moment, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to select these two other objects and I'm going to move them to the last layer. This gives me a nice empty plane to work, uh, space to work with. So here I'm going to add a plane and I'm just going to leave it like that. Oh no, I'll scale it up. And now I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to make uh, the plane transparent. I'm going to press N to bring up the window properties and I'm going to add a background so that I have something to base everything on. Before that I'm going to save it to try and negate another problem I found earlier. So I'm just going to save it in Blender, Critter Crisis, uh, and I'm going to just save over my other one. So just save over that and now I have the file saved and I'm going to add an image. I'm going to display this only on the top view and I need to open that up so I'll go to textures and I'll select the reptile texture I downloaded from CG textures. I wasn't looking too hard I just grabbed the first one that caught my eye. So now I've applied that, that should come up in the top view. I really hope this works because it hasn't been working for me today. So 7, I'm currently still in perspective view so I want to change to orthographic. Orthographic is the main view used for editing a lot of things. I'm going to scale this up, I'm going to scale on the X direction to make the right length. Um, then I'm also going to add a lattice. Add lattice, scale that up as well. I want the lattice to be slightly larger than the plane. Scale Z back to top view and scale the Y down a bit. There we are. I want to increase the subdivisions of the lattice, so I'm going to do 5 and 5 um, just to give more control over how the plane moves. Then I'm going to go into the lattice, I'm going to press Tab to edit it, and I want to grab this and I'll move, grab this one and I want to move it further up here. Notice how the plane doesn't do anything, it just sits there. That's for two reasons. One is I haven't subdivided the plane first and so if I move it, um, I'll show you again with the lattice, if I grab this and I move it down, it doesn't do anything yet. So that's for two reasons. One, not subdividing the plane. So I'll do that, I'll press W, subdivide, and I'll do it so it's in line with the lattice. So that was three subdivisions like that, and now it's in line. Go tab, and now it still doesn't align with the plane, even though I've moved it like this. So to the plane, I want to add a modifier, and that's a lattice to form modifier. And I will select my lattice, and now it forms, as you can see here. Now if I go back into my lattice, I press tab, I can grab this down, and it will form the lattice appropriately. So, now back in here I'm going to press Z to make it transparent again, and I'm going to grab these and form it to the general shape. Okay, I'm going to pause it there and come back in a moment. Sorry about that. Okay, um, now you can just deform the lattice um, as you wish. This is not going to be the great, a great job, it's just going to be quick, simple, and hopefully it might look alright at the end but as I said it's just for your tutorial and it won't be the best. The tool I'm using is the box select tool um, and then I'm just pressing G to grab the vertices. If you've used the old version of Blender, you'll notice that the box select tool has changed. So um, 
no longer do, um, can you press B twice in order to change your paintbrush speed tool. Now B is just associated with the box speed tool. And if you press B a second time, nothing else will happen, I don't think. Um, and the paintbrush tool has changed now to C. So if I press C, I can set the paintbrush tool. And I can select multiple vertices. But I don't want that at the moment. So then I've sort of got to the shape now. Oh, it's not that great, but it's sort of the general shape. I'm just going to grab these in a bit, cut them in a bit further. And same a bit for these. Before you noticed how I subdivided the plane, you can also subdivide the plane using the subdivide surface. That gives nice curved edges. Um, this isn't always good. Sometimes you want nice square edges. You can also change where the modifier is applied. So instead of applying the modifier after you've applied the mesh deform, the lattice deform, you can apply it first. So then the lattice deform will act on the modifier as well, rather than um, you applying that later. And so then you can um, change. Um, how far you'd form it as well. So the first one is view, so when you view it just like this, and the second one is how it looks when it's rendered. So I'm going to go back into the plane, tab, edit, Z, oh no, not plane, sorry, um, lattice, tab, edit, Z, so I can see everything, and I'll grab these out just again because I think I moved them too close. There we are. That sort of looks like it, but it's only in two dimensions at the moment. So I want to add a third dimension. And so I'll just go into this view. Keep deforming it. This won't be a work of art, it's just quick and simple. And you can keep working on that until you have the right shape. So I think I've moved everything over that way too much, so I'm just going to drag it this way again and move these up a bit. There we are. That's sort of an acceptable shape. I'm sure you can do much better, so give it a try, see how it works. Now I'm going to apply the bump map. So as I said before, I got a texture of CG textures. That's the texture you can see in the background here. Now I'm going to use that both as the bump map and as the uh, image texture. So to do that, I'll go out of the edit mode for the lattice, I'll select the plane, I'll add a material, I don't need to worry about any of this at the moment, I'll then go into my textures tab, I'll add a new texture, and this will be image or movie. I'll open up, actually I won't need to open that, because I've already opened it, I'll just select the reptile texture, it shows it up here, and it will automatically apply to the colour. Um, by default I think it is and if I go then F12 nothing comes up. This is before I move the light and the camera to the last layer so I want to um, display all layers so I'm going to press the tilde key display all layers like this and now this goes to the camera I'm going to press F12 to render the image. At the moment you get this fuzz here. This is because you have a specular material and it's quite high at the moment we're not going to change that yet because the fuzz also shows that this is just a 2D plane. It might look slightly 3D because the image is 3D, but it is only 2D. So when you look at it in game, when you can actually move the camera around and have multiple lights, it will look 2D. It will look silly and 2D. So you want to add another texture. Um, you want the same, so you want an image or movie. You want to use the same um, texture as before, um, the same image map as before. Except this time, um, you want to adjust the contrast, brightness, and saturation. 
so you want the brightness to be quite high and the same with the contrast and you want it to be black and white. You can also do bump match with colour but I prefer just using black and white. And then you don't want it to affect the colour values of the material, you want it to affect the normal values and sometimes a bit of the warp values as well. And so now if I go F12, it actually curves it to the shape of the material. You can tweak this, you can adjust this and make it work a lot better. For some reason I'm getting these patches here. As a quick fix, I'm just going to go to Material Properties and I'm going to go to the Specular. Turn it down, make it a green, turn down the intensity, press F12 to render. And that cloaks most of that. So it hasn't fixed it, it's just cloaked it. Um, you can fine tune it and get it so it will fix it and it will work properly. I might try decreasing this to 0 0.7. Um, try it without the warp as well. It's made it all slightly lighter. Um, you'll notice with the high quality renderings and when you're playing in game, if you use this, t this texture or another texture like this in game, you'll notice you can actually see the 3D surface. So that is a lot better. Using um, a poly mesh is great for detail, but using a texture map or a bump map is fantastic when you need to save on processing time. So this didn't take long to render, but another image using high polys would take a little longer. And then you'd have to do the materials as well, so you'd have to, um, you can then use UV mapping or another method if you want. So I might just adjust the render up and that'll be it. So I'll just go to the scene properties. I'll use one of the render presets, so the HD. And I'll go high dealiasing, full sample, and I'll just do the image there. Alright, thanks for watching, and I might do a couple more of these tutorials, I'll look for comments, and I might upload this to Facebook to see what other people think as well. So, thank you.